Hey everyone, welcome to the Close by Mo podcast. I hope by now you know who I am. My name is Mohammed. you can call me Mo. I'm a real estate broker and investor in New York City. And sitting across from me are my clients that actually purchased their first property last year. Um, let them introduce themselves. This is Francisco and this is Elizabeth. Can you guys tell us a little bit more about yourself, starting with you, Francisco? Uh, hi, yeah, I'm Francisco. Um, I'm a software engineer in New York City. And uh, yeah, I guess now a house hacker, or soon to be house hacker. Okay. Yeah, I'm Elizabeth, um, a data scientist, uh, actually working in California, but remotely from New York, and yeah, also a first-time house hacker. Okay, um, can you guys talk to me a little bit more about uh, any of the investments that you made, may have made in the past, and as well as what your family background has been like in real estate? What we're trying to show the people listening or watching is what, what kind of background do you guys come from? Do you guys come from real estate? Do you not come from real estate? What does that look like? Well, I can start because it's very limited. So my, my family essentially had no real estate investment other than their, the main house that I lived in for uh, 18 plus years oh, okay. that I grew up in. So I was actually very, you know, like I was not exposed at all to the real uh-huh. estate industry. And um, this was pretty, meeting him uh, uh. <laughs> was kind of how I got introduced to the idea that oh, that's cute. you know, like real estate was a wise investment, and um, I think your your family has a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I I grew up in San Francisco. I I, I moved a, a bunch of places growing up. My parents owned and sold houses. Oh wow! Okay. As, as we moved. Okay. Um, to not, but not like investment properties. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, you know, I think for me. The intro to real estate was um, as I sort of like, you know. So today, my parents uh, they've moved to a bunch of places. Mm-hmm. You know, they now own an, an apartment that they're going to retire to. Okay. But I wouldn't call them like real estate investors. I think if anything, my my parents and she would attest to this. They were um, they got burned. Ooh, uh, really? Uh, mm-hmm. They got burned a couple of times, um, and and I think that in many ways made them more cautious mm. in discussing real estate with me. So they, so uh, one time getting burned was basically they owned an apartment in mm. San Francisco in the 90s, okay. um, had a tenant in an illegal unit, okay. um, and sort of strong tenant protections and the whole yeah. thing and sort of forced them to, to sell the place. Oh wow, did they, if you don't mind me interrupting, did they, uh sell it with the tenant occupied? They well, sold it with the tenant occupied okay. and, and and just kind of had to get rid of it. Um, you know, of course, this was the Mission District, San Francisco in the 90s. Oh, okay, um, okay. You know, and so it's like the sort of thing where you look back on it now and it's multi-million dollar yeah, yeah. place. Uh, but being able to, and, and so I think the lesson that that taught me is like, you kind of have to be able to ride out the, the waves. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, so my current philosophy of like, Current place, sure. I'm kind of thinking like, never sell. Never sell. Long term, just keep buying and holding. Because you just gotta buy and hold. So that was yeah. And so you know, my parents obviously when I told them, hey, we're thinking about buying a place, we'd like to rent house out. hack and rent mm-hmm. out. They were obviously like very. I gotcha. Um, they were scared maybe a little bit. Yeah. PTSD. I think, right? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, but on the flip side, as an adult. I have always lived in neighborhoods that just become prohibitively expensive mm. as I stay there. I view real estate as like the only surefire rent control. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, cities can impose rent restrictions what they will, but like sure. your mortgage is fixed. Yeah, that's know? true. And um, at a certain point, for me, it became kind of an emotional like insurance plan that mm. I wanted. Okay. You know, it's like. Uh, and yeah, so anyway, we, we bought in Brooklyn, what, four, four or five months ago? Yeah, last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so far, you know, it's, it's been, yeah. this is definitely our biggest investment to date. Like, oh, by far. We haven't, I don't think we've invested in anything else <laughs> okay. Okay. other than yeah. like stocks here and there, but. Gotcha, gotcha. No, but you know, I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it just because I think uh, it's a decision that looking back, I probably should have done 15 years ago. Yeah. You know, it's like every single time you looked at it, 
and you're like, ah, it's like I could do that, like sure. maybe, well, but it's not as nice of a place, and I would have to like go through the, the financing, go through all the trouble oh, of doing it. I, had I just put in the work, up front, seven or eight years yeah. ago, um, you know. So I'm kind of hoping that you know, seven or eight years from now, you'll be like, oh, I'll think about it. Okay, just there. You know what's thank funny God is, you know, before you got here, uh, myself and Liz were talking about uh, Bushwick because right? that's where you buy. We'll, we'll get into that mm-hmm. in a little bit. Um, and I was telling her how you know Bushwick is becoming you know in five to ten years you can start you can see those trends now Bushwick is going to become like you know Williamsburg a little mm-hmm. bit where all the cool people sort of hang out right and I have the reason I was talking about it with her was because I have clients that are in the exact same shoes as where you are and I was going through like the market report just like I did for you guys going through like what's available what worked what what is it, how do the numbers break down you can't find you can't find anything reasonable right, multi family for under a million anymore yeah. No. Right? Um, now, good segue into this is, you know, can you give us a little bit of background about your current property? Obviously, don't disclose the address or the street, uh, but in terms of number of units, uh, bonus rooms, anything like that, uh, tell us a little bit more about the property itself, how many units, uh, you know, what, what, the, what the goal was going into it. Uh, yeah, so we wanted a two or three unit um, townhome um, where we would live in one of the units and then rent out one or two of the other units. And our budget was, you know, we were we were aiming for somewhere around like one two, mm-hmm. one point two. We could go up to one point five ish, but lower would be better. And um, yeah, and we we also just we were living in Bushwick prior to mm-hmm. buying this house, so we knew we liked the neighborhood. We also were looking at Ridgewood. Sure, it's another uh, area that we really liked that we were looking in. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, everything was probably like most of the things that we looked at were in like the one three range. Sure, sure. Yeah, which was kind of like you know it was reasonably priced, but we didn't think it was nothing screamed as like this is an excellent deal to us. Um, but then when we saw this place, which ended up being, I think they originally had it up for what was it like one one five? Yeah, they, they had it listed up for a while. I recall now and. I that a lot of things sort of worked in our favor. Yeah. With yeah. This one we had uh, we had initially saw it. Another buyer had I think already placed an offer and they were about to sign. That's and right. They got cold feet. Through, yeah. yeah. They got cold feet. The broker called me up right away and I was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure my buyers are still interested. Let's see what we can do. And it was props to you guys too. You know, you guys knew exactly what you wanted. So yeah. we were able to move in there and uh, get us uh, get us something decent and avoid the mansion tax too. Yeah. 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 They lowered the price significantly. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. So they ended up. Uh, listing it for like nine nine five to yeah, us, yeah, and yeah. we got it for nine 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 nine. I mean, but yeah, and also to comment on on Bushwick. Um, so we we moved to New York a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. We ended up in Bushwick. Um, I really like the area. I mean, I I grew up in a Latino neighborhood. Okay. Like you know, I grew up in the Mission District. Okay. Grew up in like a bilingual household. So for me, like Bushwick is kind of it's got the kind of yeah. Like that balance, like home, it feels like local. Yeah, you know, and it's good, good Mexican food, and yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, and the people so far have been nice. We're close to a bunch of schools, mm-hmm. um, but then you know, in in our search, um, you know, you really start to appreciate the effect of zoning when you're looking for places. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's like um, two or three family places in this area of Bushwick is hard to find. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like most things are five or six. Yep. And that's kind of, it's just like a different, you're signing up for a different thing yeah. at that point. Yeah, um, yeah. And so I feel very fortunate that like we managed to find kind of a, a on the smaller end town yeah. home. Um, and then, yeah, you know, so far it's been... It's good. There's, yeah. a, there's a saying we say, you know, it's like, uh, you don't want the biggest house on the block or the biggest or nicest house in the neighborhood. Right. You want something that's like reasonable for you. But let those other bigger homes sort of appreciate your value. And if you if you walk, I remember when we did our walkthroughs at the other, you know uh, the other areas of Bushwick, there's like new developments going up oh, left yeah. and right, right. And it's like these are all there's like multi yeah. like four or five units. Uh, they're not huge towers, but they're like they're taller than yours, you know. No, yeah. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of development in the area. I think you know because obviously the the L interchanges there. Yep. So like the L and the M meet. Um, yeah. Cool. So um, one question that. Um, I specifically interact with a lot of my clients on, and I, I've done the exact same thing to you. When I, I recall when we first spoke, we had like our consultation and we went through everything. Um, your goals going into it are not going to be the same as your goals when you actually go and look at properties and take a look. When you start to really like it becomes tangible. 
Um, so can you talk to me a little bit more about what was your criteria going into the house hacking process? Because a lot of times, and I, I'm pretty sure I, I had this conversation with both of you too, which is if you're looking for cash flow, you're not going to find it. Not in years zero to uh, years yeah. three, five, right? Do you, like this is like a long, like if you know you're going to be in New York for at least multiple years, then it makes sense. So can you talk to me a little bit about what your uh, preconceived notions were about what your goal was going to be and then how that changed as we started the process? Yeah, I mean, I think I think you said this actually, which is New York is not a uh, cash flow market. market. Yeah, the, yeah, and and it's really true. Like on, so okay, qualify that. New York is not a cash flow market given traditional financing requirements. Sure. If you're gonna put 40, 50 percent down, I'm fine. Yeah, that's you know. Uh, but like on a traditional mortgage, nothing will cash flow, mm -hmm. and so I think, um, the the real calculus is like you know. If you like, let's say you get a townhome and you're like mm -hmm. living in one of them, what's the equivalent mortgage and fees for that unit if mm -hmm. it was a condo? Um, and once you do that calculus, uh, you you do realize that it's like it's much cheaper to house hack. Yeah. And I think there there's there's two reasons for that. One is uh, you know obviously like you you can write off a lot of the like rental income, yeah. you know, tax advantages, etc. Um, the other is taxes. The, mm -hmm. the taxes are fundamentally different yeah. um, uh, uh, and so you know I'm pretty happy with what we nice. ended up with uh, you know where because it's like you know we'll probably get to this but like we don't yet have a tenant in mm -hmm. there because um, we're hoping to do renovations but then what, once we do get a tenant in there like this will be half the price of what an equivalent condo yeah. would have been right and um, and yeah, and I think that's, and, and then there it's like, you know, even if it doesn't cash flow, et cetera, it's like, you know, if, if the rental market appreciates in five years the same way it has mm -hmm. in the last five. As and it will, if, yeah, yeah, as it probably well, will, it, and if interest rates go down, which it might yeah, over the so, next five or 10 years. Um, but yeah, you know, so overall, like I'm pretty that's happy good. and, and you know, I, I think to, to another point, it's like we looked for a while, mm -hmm. um, you can't be too picky. Like, yeah, yeah, that's fair. you kind of have to just like jump on something and then kind of make it work for you. That's that's really interesting. I'd, I'd be curious to hear your business thought on it too, because a lot of times uh, with the first time, uh, you know, people that are buying those for the first time, you have, mm -hmm. and it, it's no knock to anyone, right? Everyone going into something you've never done before, you have a preconceived notion. It's very skewed based off of maybe information you've read online or social media, things you've seen. And a lot of times, um, you know, the client journey for me is as we go through the discovery phase, which is what we did too, which is like, hey, let's go look at properties. For me, it's the reason I, I tell people to do that is so we can sort of come down a reality about what's feasible and what's not feasible in the current market, given your current budget. And I tell people the same thing. Uh, there's three things when you're house hunting or any kind of real estate. Uh, price, property, location, and you can only have two. You can only have two out of those three. It doesn't matter what your budget is, 100,000 or 100 million, you're only gonna get two of those, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk to us a little bit more about like what your journey was like as yeah. someone who maybe hasn't experienced as much real estate as his family has? Yeah, and yeah, I, I came in like probably more ho hoping for <laughs> all three probably okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, like we had a couple of friends who are um, not, they're not house hacking they're not living in their properties but they're investing in houses in in Maryland and renting mm -hmm. them and they you know are like all about cash flow yeah maximizing cash flow which you can do there mm -hmm. and so we kind of came in expecting that and we're like a little bit caught off guard yeah. that it just didn't seem possible mm -hmm. um, in New York City, and I'm glad we found you who like confirmed what we were <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what we were seeing and <laughs> um, were able to validate that. But yeah, coming from like a background where I had spent my entire childhood in like one home, mm -hmm. I definitely had, especially since we're house hacking and we're planning to live in this house. Mm -hmm. I had more of an expectation of like this kind of has to be a dream house. Oh, I see, I see. Um, or you know, it doesn't have to be the ultimate dream house, but if I'm going to be living in it, it, it this should be something that I would spend you know the rest of my life in. Sure, sure. Um, There's more of an emotional attachment. There was more, yeah, an expectation that I would have more of an emotional attachment, mm -hmm. and I think during the process I had to let go of that emotional attachment a little bit and sure. like tell myself this is an investment like this is a good 
idea for our future, regardless of where we live in 10 years from now, right? Like we could still live in this place 10 years from now, and we're hoping to, and we're, we're gonna do renovations uh, as, you know, part of that plan. But like, it was kind of taking that mindset and pivoting it so that I had a wider range of options to look at, yeah. and I wasn't like so emotional about I got you. about the properties. And it, you know, it's it's no knock to you or to anyone because I feel like when you first start the process, you know, this the first time you buy a house or the first time you sell a house, it is the biggest transaction you're probably oh, yeah. ever going to do, right? So mm-hmm. I, as it's a broker, very daunting. It's it is very daunting, you know, because no no one's ever spent that kind of money. And like, especially I remember when I bought my first property, I was like making an escrow payment of a check I've never written this big of a check before and I've spent years saving up money for something like this, you know? So I think the broker's responsibility is to understand that sensitivity, especially working with people. It doesn't matter how much of a, like the focus is on investment. Like if it's your first time, there's, you're going to go through a bit of an emotional roller coaster, right? And the broker's responsibility is to sort of be like a bridge between like, hey, here's where you are, here's where the market might be, and it's my job to sort of soften the blow and tell you, okay, your expectations are too high or no, your expectations are too low. I, I remember saying with some properties, like, this is too, this is too expensive for what, what these guys are yeah. wanting, right? Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about then what the current renovation process is like and what your thought process is going into it? And the reason I ask is because I've noticed both in myself and with other clients that have closed you know, several months ago, a lot of times with the first property, people tend to go a bit overboard so can you talk to me a little bit about what the <laughs> mindset going into it is and how where you guys are right now? Yeah, I mean... We went overboard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... For sure. But this was... but uh, to, to, uh, I actually expected to end up where we ended up. And okay. the reason is precisely what she just said mm. around um, the her, her having this emotional attachment. Okay. And so the way I've always viewed it is like the... Comp- this was the compromise. Mm. This literally, uh, maybe you didn't view it that way, but I always like kind of expected this to happen. Gotcha. Um, because the compromise was like, you know, it's not the nicest house on the block. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, you know, it's old. It's a little bit of work. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit of work. You know, the previous people smoked. Like, you know, it's, 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 but it's got good, good bones, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and, and uh, so, yeah, you know, the, the hope is that like, you know, put enough work such that like she's happy living mm-hmm. there like long long term, okay. um, and so yeah. But there's actually like a, a little bit of a parallel with what you were saying before, which is like, um, you know, buying a house is like this complex mm-hmm. process. Yeah. Financial, regulatory, yes. procedural. Um, renovating a house is the same way. It's Please like tell us more about it. It's it's just like, you know, there's the DOB. Like yeah. Every, you know, so it's it's like you can do it under you can do it under the table. Yeah. Uh, we're we're doing significant enough renovations that like we're trying to not do that. Okay. And there the the quarterback, so to speak, is like the architect. The architect. Yeah. Uh, we got very lucky in that like we got really like our architect, um, and uh, she's been a very good calming force mm. on like, but yeah, you know the the numbers add up like yeah, they, they get sure. big, but you know it's stuff that's going to add value. Exactly. Um, it's going to, you know, we're going to add a bathroom on each floor. Like nice. that's going to change the calculus of like how you rent it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, and, and so we it's specifically like, asked the architect, we specifically said like, we want to keep, keep this as a two unit right. rental. We want to add rental value to yeah, this. Yeah. Adding bathrooms is pretty significant for oh, rental yeah. value, oh, like yeah. sealing off bedrooms because we didn't really talk about this before, but mm-hmm. The layouts are very, it uh, feels almost like a San Francisco style apartment where it's, it's a total railroad. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you have to enter each room to go together. or go into a public hallway yep. to en- access any room. And so it's kind of a weird setup for roommates mm-hmm. um, or even for two units where you don't really know your, mm-hmm. na- your downstairs or upstairs neighbor very well. Mm-hmm. So the renovations we're planning on doing are like geared towards maximizing rental mm, opportunity right. okay um, so so yeah even though it's now a big project mm-hmm. I don't feel that bad about it because mm-hmm. like you know it is actually gonna add value it's like right. it, you know it's gonna be the sort of thing where like all of a sudden two people who want to be roommates have their own bathrooms and their own lives like they could move into one of the units and people will pay a premium for that people compared to other units on the, in the same yeah, neighborhood you know yeah. you know and um, but yes, it the whole process is so much more involved and longer. Uh, but you know, it's 
It's a learning experience. It's a learning experience, and it's going to make the next time easier. Exactly. It's like there's no more this uncertainty yep. of exactly how do you go about this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like now I know I like call up Mo and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to give, give you my perspective <laughs> on the next one. No, it, it's it's great because uh, and I remember one, once we closed a couple of weeks later, you're like, I'm ready for the next. One. I'm like, no, yeah. no please <laughs> go through the motions first because there's going to be a lot of things that you'll uncover um, yeah. over the next few months, and I'm sure you guys have probably learned a lot about yourself and the house too. Yeah. Speaking with the architect, um, we just had our first uh, our first homeowner issue, which was a, a broken steam pipe. Oh wow, okay. So I got yeah. True, true. <laughs> how'd you guys? Uh, how'd you guys deal with that? Just yeah. called a plumber and dealt with it. You well, know? we didn't notice it for a while, which was kind of an issue. Um, and like the steam was rising up from the basement into the like floor into oh. the first wooden floor. Oh, into the floor. Into, into the wooden floor. So it was getting like you guys could feel the squeakiness, maybe. Yeah, and like there was like a little bit of warping. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> it's fine. It's we fine. eventually it's fine. discovered it and. Um, Called a plumber and he fixed it and it, you know it was a thousand dollars. It's like there there are more expensive issues. Yeah, yeah, there there definitely are. But I, I also feel like it's a learning experience and sure. it definitely helps uh, shorten the curve for the next one, right? And totally. mm -hmm. one of the things I've noticed difference between working with a first time buyer and someone who's already like bought and sold a home or is currently in the process of buying their second home, you just know exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. right? you, sure. you have so much more clarity when you walk into a property. Then you know like well. This is how it is now, but I know I have to handle the DOB with this, this, that. Here's how much it's going to cost me. Right. I'm going to work that into the pricing too. Um, so it's a yeah. lot more uh, cut and dry when working with the second or third time buyers or yeah. clients because uh, they just they just know what they want, you know. And it's like yeah. uh, you end up looking at far fewer homes too. Um, but yeah. Well, and, and and that's actually like another thing, which is that um, I came to realize this about New York, and this is probably like, you know. The second that you start getting very specific about mm -hmm. what you want, um, you're going to end up looking for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and that's okay, you know, it's like, but you know, this idea of like, you're like, I'm going to buy a home in summer of 2022, it's yeah. like, like, like you kind of move away from that and you're kind of like, I would like to buy a property in the next few years and then it's like, once you have like a, an area that you're looking in, um, you know. It's like stuff just trickles in, especially yeah. now, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Especially now, it's like, in, in many ways, I actually kind of count our blessings mm -hmm. because I think the interest rates shot up yeah. shortly after we closed. Yeah. And, yeah. and inventory just... It shrunk, man. Just, just, yeah, it got really tight. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm constantly looking and I'm like, actually... <laughs> so like, the prices, yeah, they keep trickling. Well, yeah, you know, stuff trickles in, yeah. but it doesn't, you know... Like, you're, you look at it and you're like, I wouldn't pay that much for it. Considering yeah. now that you, because now you know it's still fresh in your mind how much you paid for yours and how much value you're getting. Yeah. Now you look at it, you look at everything from that frame of reference, and you're like, okay, well, I, you know, I don't know if I can yeah. swing this. I don't know if this is priced well or not. You know, but one thing that you had mentioned was very important was you have a lot of clarity, which I give you guys both credit to in terms of what you're wanting out of it, right? So you both knew, like, when, when, during our first phone call, you're like, well, we know we want to be in Brooklyn or in New York for a very long time. So when you extend your investment horizon or your time span that long, a lot of the little things like an architect or renovation, like those yeah. things are priced in, they get absorbed mm -hmm. in because you know, hey, in 10 years when I sell this, I'm gonna make all that back and then some, plus I'm getting the revenue from the rental income, yeah. uh, plus my mortgage payment stays fixed unless I refinance and don't take cash out or you know, and then my payment's gonna drop too, you know? Uh, so you're you're getting uh, you're getting value in a lot of different ways, and, and we like our house more. <laughs> and you like your house more. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There's a. Uh, I'm excited for you both to you know when you guys file your taxes, you'll finally be able to write off a bunch of stuff now. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That should be true. fun too, right? Taxes well, and, 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 and some of the renovations, right? Some of the like, renovations too. You know, it's it's, it's uh, yeah. You can go down the rabbit hole of like, yeah. This will be the f first time that we ever itemized. <laughs> There yeah. you go. Make sure you get. I mean, if you need recommendations for CPAs or accountants, please give me a shout. Yeah. Um, there's a a lot of them. The good ones aren't taking on any, any more new clients, but there's a couple that do specifically just focus with real estate investors. Mm -hmm. and I'm happy to make the introduction. Yeah. Um, can I ask you then, what would you have done differently? What do you regret doing, and what would you have? How would you have approached it differently, maybe? Don't say working with Mo. <laughs> do you, do you, do you have an answer? Or, right. I don't have an answer yet. Uh, I, I think I would have seeked someone like you out earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
That's um, very kind. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. by the way, I'm not forcing him to say this. But <laughs> just, no, just so I mean, you know. I mean, so there, there are like, um, you know, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that I consider us real estate investors. But that being said, the 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 mindset with which you uh, frame things and approach things, mm -hmm. um, I think it's just like a more rational and it's mm -hmm. just like a more um, yeah it's like less emotional it's about, more methodical is what I tell people yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's more methodical and I think that helps mm -hmm. right and it's, you it, made us do like a little bit of homework which was yeah. helpful like you were like okay now you guys look up the prices of these things and we'll come you know we'll, we'll come back in. in a day and we'll like share what yeah. we think it's worth yep, yep. but you know it helped us I think a lot of people's real estate journeys are like a little bit more emotional, mm -hmm. you know. It can be like very like uh, like the SNL skit, like the Zillow, the Zillow yeah. dating, and, and all this stuff. And I think um, a thing that I really appreciated about our experience was like, yeah, you were just like very methodical about it, which I think helped because you know the, the emotion is going to trickle in there, of course. Whether whether you want it, it or not, it's part of the process. By the way, I tell my clients too, it's like. Uh, Look, I'm, I'm here as your broker. I'm here. I have a fiduciary obligation to tell you my advice. You're, you know, whatever decision right. I make, at least you know, I'm obligated to follow it. But I'll tell you if I think, hey, this is realistic, this is unrealistic, which I, I think I've done very gently with you both. Uh, but uh, you know, part of my responsibility is to be a punching bag and take on the, that roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. And you know, sometimes it's worse than other times. Uh, but I feel like credit to you both. I mean, you both were very reasonable. And the, one of the reasons why I tell people, like, hey, here's here's what I'm seeing. I encourage you to go and look at it too. Is so you feel that, okay, number one, you're gonna be fact-checking me as well, right? Because implicitly, when you're working with a broker, like at the end of the day, if the transaction doesn't close, I don't get paid, right? So I don't want people to feel as if, uh, you know, misdirecting them or anything, because I'm confident in my research, and I say, well, you go do it, and then we'll, we'll compare our notes. Yeah, yeah, so I, I, think, I think seeking out, like, um, just a, a methodically rational, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you know, broker who's like kind of, kind of be honest with you, I think mm -hmm. that that's, that's thing number one. And thing number two is it's actually just really understanding your wants. Mm -hmm. um, like, do your homework. Um, uh, you know, set the alerts. Uh, just just uh, a passive observation beyond the horizon of which yeah. you're looking. Right? There's like a there's like a warm up period. I think. Yeah. Like, the discovery know. phase, what we call it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and there comes a point at which. Um, it's called like like establishing distributions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you just watch things come on, and and you know what's your what's your gut check of yeah, like do you think yeah. that's what that that's right that's not and then you like you play the game of like okay this one will go fast this one won't yeah. and then and then at a certain point like you really do and it's not a skill I mean it's a skill that you can just develop by looking at things. sure yeah you know it's just like you do the homework yeah. Um, and then now, I think after looking passively for like a couple of years at these areas, it's like, oh, okay, well now I, I yeah, think yeah. I could, you know, when something comes on, I'm like, okay, that's gonna go. Like yeah, they're, yeah. they've priced it at a number where they're gonna get a couple offers and then move, and then this other one is like not, you know. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And I think you can do some of that work yourself. Yeah, I 100% agree because, you know, as a broker, I, I have access to more information, like more detailed information, because we have the system that like has all the raw data. Yeah. So I can, I can make decisions very quickly. Um, what I've realized is, obviously everyone's on their own journey. I can't force someone to get to a destination or an opinion that I, even I think is correct. I have to sort of hold your hand a little bit, but guide you and present the facts and right. say, well, you know, what do you think? Um, and what I've found is super helpful is, you know, detailing my information, my background, my research, tell you where I think it's coming from. And then I put the ball in your court and say, okay, you need to go fact check this and let's reconvene tomorrow. Uh, and I think one thing you guys did really well was, I think because you guys have done the research, that like passive research for a while, uh, when I said, hey, the iron, you know, we got to strike while the iron's hot, we're like, bam, okay, let's go ahead and do it. And we didn't, we didn't really waste any time. I think we had the offer accepted, we were out for an inspection a couple of days afterwards, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, what, about, what about you, Viz? Any regrets? Please, you got to think of something. <laughs> or anything you would have done differently. No, no regrets, but anything you would have approached differently, you think? Yeah. I think... Um I think we we probably jumped into a renovation a bit too quickly, mm -hmm. um, and we didn't get a tenant in immediately upon moving in, which like we really could have. Mm 
Because um, it was livable. I, it it, was yeah, completely livable. And, and several people have come over and been like, I would live here. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll pay you money to live here. Yeah. Um, and I think we were, we were just, we were still kind of hesitant there. Mm. Um, and now, you know, it's been long enough and we're close enough to the renovation actually happening that it, it doesn't make sense to put in a tenant now. Mm-hmm. But like, we really could have yeah. a few months ago and had somebody in there for a year, mm-hmm. uh, most likely. I think, you know, a lot of times with stuff like that, um, what, I, what I've heard, and I think it's maybe because the grass is always greener, um, I've had clients buy a property, put a tenant in there, and then say, you know what, I wish I did the renovation sooner because mm-hmm. then I didn't have to worry about the tenant schedule. I didn't have yeah. to worry about getting the tenant out and then right. doing the renovations because it's, it's yeah. nearly impossible to do renovations with a tenant in there. That, that, that was actually our thought. And that right. was another concern, so I wasn't sure which way was the right way to go. No, no I, I think you guys, especially if you know, like, hey, we're going to do some big scale renovations, but yeah. once you do all that, maybe throughout this year, then you know for the next 10 years we don't have to, do, we don't have to touch exactly. anything, right? Exactly, yeah. Then you can have a tenant for, you know, who stays for years, hopefully. And that's kind of the hope. The, yeah. the hope would be, you know, When, and, yeah. Go ahead, sorry. I was gonna say like like and yeah, like I think ideally we would want someone who just stays for a long time. For a long time. And that's the that's the goal for everyone, you know, and that's then the you, you factor in the annual rent increases as you as you should and the cost of living goes up. Um, one thing that uh, I found with a lot of uh, uh, first time investors, including myself, um, what you will find as well, when you go through the tenant process, um, you will also find yourself leaning towards making emotional decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very difficult because now you're not just not just you buying a house and that's the emotional those are all the equations now now there's someone else involved too um, and the mistake I made earlier on was making decisions based off of what other people were telling me and what I was feeling not what I was seeing on the paper on the paper it's right? so on paper for example I knew this person um, had XYZ records against them I won't mention whatever it is um, but um, you know they seem like a nice person right and I was like hey maybe I could run run to this person out or whatever it is uh, but you know, my only bit of advice that I would part is be extremely ruthless about um, your criteria going into the tenant uh, screening process. And I recommend you do it yourself the first, at least try it yourself. Yeah. Because what you'll find is you'll, you'll learn so much about like what's out there and why landlords in New York City, you know, it's, it's, not, a walk, it's, it's, you know, it's not a walk in the park. Yeah. Right. Um, because the, I would much rather, and I've done this, I would much rather leave one of my units vacant for months on end mm. before I put someone in there that uh, I don't trust. Sure yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad you say that because we, I, I think that we still haven't quite done enough of our research to understand like what our criteria really are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we we actually did almost jump into a tenant. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, that's and then we back, backed out of it. Well, tell me, tell me how that, how, if you, without divulging too much, I would say. Well, it was just a very uh, unofficial slap shot. Okay. It was a friend of a friend of a friend who okay. needed who needed an apartment month to month. Okay. We were like, oh, well, month to month, like that could actually work for us because we don't know when this renovation sure, is starting. Sure. Um, but she couldn't afford the like whole unit, so we were gonna okay. potentially give her like a part of the unit. Oh, I see. Um, and we did zero background checks or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got kind of to the last minute, and we were we just oh. got cold feet. And, okay. And good. <laughs> you, 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 you see. You dodge yeah. a bullet, and yeah. I, by the way, if, so, if someone's coming up to me and saying, hey, I don't have the money to rent your whole apartment, can I rent a piece of it, don't go adjust your price filter on Zillow, I'm sorry, it's, you know, you have to be kind of ruthless about it, and yeah. I recommend my clients to try it themselves first, see if they, if they have it, and it, it's not a, um, you know, um, it's not a, anything negative against you if you feel like, hey, you know what, uh, maybe for stuff like this, uh, I'll, I'll trust your broker. Yeah, I'll yeah. trust your broker because yeah. the broker will have legal protection too. If anything were to happen, or if you were to reject a, someone, God forbid, and they come back and say, "Well, this is discrimination and X Y Z, whatever it is," it's not coming to you, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I, I'd still recommend you guys try it out because there's a lot of free, free and some freemium resources out there that help landlords screen people. Yeah. Um, just so you guys get get a taste of what that's yeah. like a little bit. I feel like maybe you got a little bit of exposure to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's uh, well. You could also do what I've done. Um, even before I've closed on some property, sometimes um, I will just 
post a listing and with no intention of renting it out just to see if the price I've listed it at hmm. is high enough. So if I list it at a certain price and I get way too many applicants or way too many inquiries, I'm like, I listed it too high. And I keep I keep dialing it up a little bit until the inquiries sort of, it's a yeah. slow trickle, a few inquiries a day, that's for me is a good number. That's how I know, okay, that's mm-hmm. market equilibrium. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Um, any closing thoughts? Anything else you guys would like to share? Any bits of advice to anyone watching who's like, oh man, I'm about to start the house hacking journey? Uh, I think you can't overthink it too mm-hmm. much. You can do some due diligence, you know, like, like I said, you do your homework, you sort of like, but there's going to come a point at which you have to settle for a, what you think is a B minus, you know, yeah. it's like, and you just accept that, like, if you're in it for the long term, and mm-hmm. if you're just, into, and, you know, obviously don't, don't overextend yourself, and like, all yeah. these other things, which they think that's another thing, like, That's we, fair. we didn't overextend. We were well within our, we were well, well within, yeah. we were well within, yeah. and I think that ultimately buys us, like, it buys us this luxury. Peace of mind, yeah, yeah. It buys us this luxury where basically we're like, okay, well, we don't actually need a tenant in there mm-hmm. yet, you know, we can take our time. Yep. Uh, I think, had we stretched to the top end of the budget, like, yeah, yeah it, 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 it buys you, it buys you time, you know, it's like, you know, and people talk about this, like, I, I've seen, I've seen people posting, like, when you see, like, like, house flippers, for example, yeah. right, um, you know, if you go up to the, to, to the edge of what you can afford, then you, all of a sudden you're on the time crunch, and I think the same applies to house hacking, yes. right? Like if you're just willing to go like a little bit under budget, then you buy yourself the flexibility of like as yeah. you were just saying. You have a bigger margin. You have, bigger you have margin. a big you have a bigger margin. You buy yourself the flexibility of saying, I'm gonna wait for the right tenant. Yep. Or I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until summer to yes. get more money. Or I'm gonna, you know. Yes. And um, I think that's that's something that I'm glad we, we did that's and good. ultimately Today, I think we're less stressed because of it. We're in a better place because of it. Yeah, we're area. less stressed because of it, and, and we can build our confidence in this mm. process, you know, without being too stressed about it. That's good. Because um, we can do it again sometime yeah. soon. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one step at a time. Any, from you, Biz, any words of advice for anyone that's starting the process that maybe was in your shoes or is in your shoes? Yeah, I, I would just say that, um, like we were discussing before, it's... It's good to take a pretty um, like logical approach to it. Run the numbers, create the matrix for yourself, mm-hmm. define what the important qualities are to you, and and like stick to those. Um, and don't let emotions play too much into it because um, it's easy to just never find something that works when you're, when you're super emotional. You know what's funny is one trend I've noticed, and I I've seen it in myself too, is because it's such a big daunting thing for us so as first time buyers, our brains are very overactive imagine you know you know we have very overactive imaginations and I remember going through the process and I remember thinking about a thousand and one ways that it could go wrong, mm-hmm. like oh my god what if this happens oh my god what if this happens what if my attorney is trying to screw me over what if my broker is trying to get at me you know what's yeah. happening what if what they trying to hide from me. And the, the thing that I, I used to say, tell myself to calm myself down was, what if everything goes right, you know? And I would look around and I'd be like, well, there's millions of people around me that are buying and selling houses. Like, they can't all be getting scammed or anything, right? Like, it, it, it wouldn't be feasible. So that would yeah. sort of help me calm down. And I'm, I'm glad that I was able to be part of that journey to help yeah. you guys mm-hmm. cross that threshold. Cause it's yeah. Not a lot yeah. Of fun. And yeah, I would also say find, find people to work with mm-hmm. like you who... Um, have a similar mindset as you and who know who I mean obviously it's great to have somebody like you who's had experience mm-hmm. in this type of thing but um, also just like understands the neighborhoods you're interested in, understands the type of buildings that you're interested understands um, house hacking in general yeah. uh, that was very helpful because we yeah we tried out a few other things that just weren't working totally for us because oh we, really you guys tried a few other brokers yeah oh, wow, okay. and um we kind of took a break until before reaching out to you mm, that's like good. we had a down period where we weren't really looking too much but um yeah just when they don't fully understand exactly what you're trying to yeah. do or don't have as much experience in what you're trying to do it's it just becomes more difficult to 
it's to think rationally about it. It's not the same language. You feel like there's a bit of yeah. a language gap. Can I can I ask then one last question? How, how did you guys find me? Was it? Uh, I found from? you on the Bigger Pockets forum. Okay. Bigger Pockets. I think. Yeah, you know, it's like you you can go two routes, right? Like you either go like with a big residential brokerage, mm -hmm. and um, or yeah, I think. I think the, the route that we ended up going, which is, you know, a, approaching it more like rationally as an investment, yeah, yeah. I think ultimately worked better for us. Cool. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys uh, had a lot of fun, uh, you know, listening in or watching wherever you're watching it from. Elizabeth, Francisco, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thanks for Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks so much, Mel. Yep.